Today, I wanted to talk about something that I believe is happening in front of our very eyes, but you may not even notice it. Shonen Jump is a magazine that provides us some of the most notorious and iconic series from Dragon Ball to One Piece. It is because of Jump that alongside a plethora of seasonal anime, a lot of the overall hype throughout the year and even anime movies come from the genre of battle action. What holds it all together is the most crucial aspect of it all being surviving the test of time. Every series that debuts through Jump must first survive the biggest hurdle of avoiding the axe. Over the past few years, we have seen series from Ayashimon, The Hunter's Guild, Candy Flurry, and worst of all, Phantom Seer meet their unfortunate end. The causes are for a heap of things from the reception to overall sales, but for those who do make it past the axe, they end up becoming regarded as some of the best series out there. One Piece in particular is a prime example of this given its global love and constant evolution within the anime, and even now stands tall next to current giants of the magazine such as Chainsaw Man and My Hero Academia. A major factor towards One Piece's success, and for a lot of other series at that, is the overall serialization length which extends its relevancy. How long will an author keep a story going and keep the quality consistent at that can be the deciding factors for big time success. All of the big three have over 500 chapters minimum, with One Piece still going on to this day with it well being over a thousand chapters. Looking at today, the sizable stories are coming down to My Hero Academia, Black Clover, and Jujutsu Kaisen, with the first two pushing towards the 400 chapter mark while Jujutsu Kaisen treads on to 300. Now while it may seem like a lot of chapters, in comparison it is actually much shorter in comparison to the earlier state of Jump. With all this rambling though, what am I trying to get at here? To say it simply, the trend of long stories and journeys within Jump is gradually decreasing and this current era just may be the last we see of long running series. A gigantic claim given that anything could change in a matter of years now and I could easily be proven wrong, but when you take into account of what stories have ended and where some are headed right now, it is definitely something to keep in mind. I want to first start talking about what has already ended in their final numeric. Over the past few years, we have had a Haikyuu ending with 403 chapters and 45 volumes, Demon Slayer with 206 chapters and 24 volumes, and Doctor Stone with 233 chapters and 26 volumes. Haikyuu barely passing Hunter x Hunter by only 3 chapters, and even then that is already more than planned to change. All of them still having ongoing animes with both Doctor Stone and Demon Slayer returning with new seasons soon, and Haikyuu getting a 2 part canon movie. Now I want to take this a step further by looking at the current weekly trends. My Hero Academia right now is in its final act with at the time of this video being at 378 chapters. Just looking at where the state of the story is right now, I would bet on this series not going further than 430 chapters at the maximum and the anime having a solid one or two more seasons up its sleeve. Black Clover is in its final arc with at the time of this video being at 348 chapters which I think will go no further than 410 chapters at most. Jujutsu Kaisen at the time of this video has 210 chapters with a recent author note from Gege Akutami themselves saying that at the very least they are in the mindset of ending the series within the year. Now of course that statement is more subject to change if anything, but I think it's reasonable to assume that the series won't go past 2024. Each of these series being in the range of 100 to 400 chapters less than Naruto which ended its run with an even 700 chapters. Now of course all good things must come to an end and each of these series for better or worse have had a really great run over the years. This generation of shonen manga I came quite attached to and only god knows how much of an emotional mess I will be when these stories conclude one by one. However even when we look ahead, the trend of these stories getting shorter still continues. Right now both Masho and Undead Unluck will undoubtedly end sometime late this year if not early 2024 at the most and I certainly expect a final arc announcement from Yozakura family towards the end of this year as well. On top of that, you can already tell that regardless of how great these manga are, Sakamoto Days, Don the Don, and Kaiju Number no. 8 are not going to be stories that play for the long haul. In fact, I would go as far as to say that I do not expect any of these series to make it past 350 chapters at max. Feel free to come back to this video and validate me if I'm right by the way. The point of this is to highlight the fact that as we embrace the new generation of shonen manga and bid our time with our current concluding series, things are gradually getting shorter. On one hand, this isn't something that should flat out be seen as a bad thing because it can be better for an author's health overall as Shonen Jump tends to have a track record of authors running into issues while on the job. However, the result of this can ricochet into something far more significant than we could have imagined when looking at new age shonen fans. Ask yourself this, do you ever expect to see another shonen character that is iconic as Goku ever again because I certainly do not. What makes Goku so iconic outside of his legendary Super Saiyan transformation is the long term story from the original Dragon Ball to Z, GT, and Super with each of these stories bringing something unforgettable to the history books. Yet even now, I don't think there's a story that has even gotten close to that height and there may not ever be one that will ever again. In a way, it's kind of sad to think about that people will never get to witness the birth of a new anime legend or iconic moments that define our childhoods because the ideas and visions are not going to be as long term and grand as they used to be. One Piece itself is a special case because I cannot imagine another soul on this planet that will want to make another story that goes on for a thousand plus chapters. Now the big question here among all of this is why? Why are these series getting shorter and shorter by the years? I think I can come up with two solid answers for
for this question. The first being that people's visions and plans are simply getting to a point where the long haul compared to a previous generation of shonen is simply not in mind. Quite frankly, I cannot blame any author for completing a story within a much shorter time frame. I think one thing that people underestimate is how taxing it can be to constantly draw and plan a story each week all year long. It's the same idea with how people think millions of dollars magically make animation good when in reality it comes down to a combination of things from planning to time allocation. The longer a story goes on does also not guarantee the quality and consistency of the enjoyable aspects of a manga will remain. There is nothing worse than seeing a favorite thing that you love go down a path that makes you feel like it's unrecognizable. I'd rather a series have a much shorter run and it be enjoyable the entire time than a longer series that may betray the foundations it was praised upon. If an author can accomplish their goal without stretching their vision more than they have to and without rushing through the plot points then by all means why should they? My second answer to this question is that the trade-off may not be worth it. We have seen the result from many authors that work under these weekly conditions. World Trigger has gone from weekly to monthly for a long time now in order to support author Daisuke Ashihara and his health. Tagashi himself has been fighting back issues for years on end now and even now is still doing his best to create a schedule that will allow him to continue Hunter x Hunter. Gege, Horikoshi, and Tabata have each had their fair share of issues resulting in breaks to unfinished art in many chapters and arcs. Even now, the author of Rui Dragon who slammed it out of the park of its debut is on an indefinite hiatus till further notice in response to pre-existing health issues. I want to take a moment to say that no dream or passion is worth your health. There is plenty of room for wanting to succeed and reach heights that not even you could have imagined, but none of it will matter if you don't prioritize your body and health first. I wish these authors could take more breaks. I wish Shonen Jump would make these breaks more mandatory for an author's sake, but unfortunately, that is not the reality that we live in. It's heartbreaking to witness because for somebody like Horikoshi, for example, they have been through the ringer with their journey. Two previous series getting axed and My Hero Academia being the big hit has probably gotten him in the mindset of pushing on to the end no matter what out of worry, but in reality, he's in a much safer position than he may realize. As a fan, it sucks to have to watch an author work themselves to the bone just to get that chapter ready for Sunday, and I wish things were different. My point is, if I were a new gen author and I see the things my peers go through, I would try to create a product that would still be in my vision while ensuring that that vision doesn't come at the expense of my health. If the conclusion that I were to come to will be to keep my series at a certain story length, then so be it. This isn't to say that any of these stories are intentionally being done like that because I don't have proof of that. Yet, you can't rule out the possibility that these authors didn't consider these things and made adjustments to their plans to ensure that these negative side effects from working in such a taxing industry won't become a burden on their lives outside of the manga. The thing about Shonen Jump is that they need these big hitters, and they need as many of them as they can get to stick around for however long as they can. With these series getting shorter and shorter, we can expect a lot of the future weekly manga to get anime announcements at a much faster rate, and overall should expect Shonen fans to be attached to various different series rather than one main long-term one. Coming up this year, we are going to have Kaiju number 8, Undead Unluck, and Masho, and I would not be surprised if 2024 were to bring Don the Don and Sakamoto days alongside Yozakura Family's anime. Shonen itself is transitioning to a new stage, and there is no telling what the magazine catalog will be looking like come next year. If there is a time for a new star to be born, it is definitely this year, and whether or not that star will be the next Naruto is something only time will tell. To bring this to a close, I personally believe that One Piece and World Trigger will be the last long-running manga of a sizable length to grace Shonen Jump in terms of its long-term storytelling. Moving forward, we are going to be gravitating towards shonen manga that deliver epic stories but not the grand or groundbreaking ones that many of us or even our parents grew up with. It's going to be interesting to see the reception of new age fans and even how the shonen anime community adapts overall. This also can usher in a new wave of content creators because the age of sticking to only one series will not be the first option to invest in when looking at the long term coverage. Of course, this is all one giant observation that I think we are moving towards but as anime and manga have taught me time and time again is that anything is possible. For all I know, there could be a bunch of rising stars preparing to debut later this year and this whole video will become obsolete in a matter of months. In the meantime though, I'll be keeping an eye on the future of Shonen Jump as I myself tend to be curious when it comes to the evolution of this medium. That's pretty much it for me though. As always, thank you for watching and make sure to let me know all your thoughts about today's discussion in the comments section down below. Stay warm out there and I will catch you guys in the next video.